G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Display Adapter Time, and this one I'm going to explain in my own weird and wonderful way the differences between a Sun Microsystems frame buffer and a bog standard x86-64 graphics card. Alright, now, as I said in this morning's promo video, from a general interface point of view, as in putting a PCI graphics card into a Sun PCI slot, the actual plug interface is exactly the same. But the way their memory mapped is very different. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, and this is the closest thing I've got to a PGX824, I know it's got an AGP interface in it, but I want you to think of this as a, just a standard PCI interface. So that'll be our frame buffer demonstration. And this, which is just a bog standard NVIDIA 64 meg graphics card. Standard PCI bus graphics card. For a long time, there were two types of video display with uh, computers. There was the x86 platform, which was your just standard PCI ISA bus uh, video adapter, plug-in card. And then there was the S bus style for Sun, known as a frame buffer. And the common frame buffers there were your um, ones I, I know and have used are the PGX824, which is an ATI Radeon graphics card, as well as the XVR100 and 400, which I think are NVIDIA. Just reading over my notes here, to give you some context about the difference between a graphics card and a frame buffer, a frame buffer uh, is a portion of RAM on the board containing all the bitmap information needed to output a display using the CPU to generate it. Now, that is a bit different to say an SGI system where you had your geometry engines and your raster managers and from that it would then be punched out to the video output card or frame buffer. <clears throat> and that then drives video memory coming from a, a, an onboard memory buffer, onboard or external memory buffer. <coughs> Now, in the case of, and as I said in this morning's promo video, I've fallen into this trap. Let me explain. Here we have a standard PCI bus graphics card. Bog standard expansion card. Now, I made the stupid mistake, and I've fallen into this trap multiple times, and by now you probably have assumed I would have learned from my mistakes, but I haven't. So, here we have a standard PCI bus interface. Now, remembering that some of the frame buffers that you can buy on eBay still use this same interface. But, the way the interface is mapped is very different. Okay, you've got to remember there's a big difference between a Sun Spark platform and an x86-64 platform. Now, if you put this into a Sun x86-64 platform, it will boot. But if you put this specific card, and any card like it, that is not marked as a frame buffer, and you go and drop it into a Sun server, it's not going to boot. Open boot prom needs to initialize the memory buffer on the card to output a display. And if it can't find the memory buffer or the mapping on the card doesn't match what open boot prom wants, it doesn't know it's there, and it'll just error, unable to initialize video memory. If we take this, which is the closest thing I've got to a PGX824, still got your heat sink on it, and this one is a, I can tell you, I think it actually is an ATI card. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Yes, it is an ATI card. Okay, so this is an ATI card. So think of this as a PGX824. 
Remembering this is just the standard PCI bus, okay? When you drop this card into a Sun server and you tell Open Boot Prom to boot, it will initialize the video memory on here because the mapping of the card matches what Open Boot Prom expects to see and will allow video to come out of the screen interface. The two most common, or I should say the most common frame buffers available for Sun are PGX824, XVR100, 400, 1200, and 4000, but 4000s are is like a Quadra uh, graphics card you put into, say, like a Mac or, or a high-end Windows-based um, workstation. When you bring up a Sun server, Spark platform, okay, what you'll often find before anything else happens is the console port gets initialized before anything else happens. And this is this is common with Sun servers, okay? Back in the old days, you would interact with a Sun server from a workstation or serial terminal front end. That's why a lot of Sun systems didn't always come with frame buffers, okay? They were, uh, they were added extra add-on using, you know, the SBUS interface, which if you're not familiar with SBUS, it has very similar, it has similarities to 68-pin SCSI interface, if you get my drift. If you have a look at it, you can see the similarity. It's completely different, but you can see the similarity. So traditionally, our Sun frame buffers were used on an SBUS interface, and it wasn't until later when they standardized it to PCI, or PCI interface, that there was a I was one person, I know some other people that assumed the minute Sun went to PCI on the Spark platform, your bog standard PCI graphics card would work. Well, it doesn't work that way. Now, to give you an idea of the graphics card, or video card, or whatever you want to call it, it generates, it's an expansion card. Now, this is true in both senses of the word. It is an expansion card, whether it's on board, so it's actually on the motherboard, or it's a card that generates feeded output images to a display. Okay, so a, a graphics card does all the graphics work, whereas a frame buffer just does all the memory work and contains the bitmap images, whereas the CPU is what runs it all. Okay, which is different again to an SGI where the CPU would load the program, but all your graphics generation stuff was done external through your geometry engines and your raster managers and all that type of stuff. Specifically with a Sun V245, okay, your run-of-the-mill standard graphics card, I don't believe, works, which means you have to go and get a frame buffer. Now, they're available all over the net. Now, depending on what you want to use your Sun server for. Now, in my case, thanks to advice from a number of viewers and everything, I'm not going to bother getting a frame buffer for the E4900. Because the true way, the true way of interacting with OpenBSD is in console mode or SSH, whatever command line. As I said before, when you boot up a Sun machine that has a frame buffer, the first thing to get initialized is the console port. Okay, that's the first thing to come up. All right. So what you often find is you might have a you know, your whopping great 13W3 monitor, like a Sun monitor or a Sony GDM monitor with a 13W3 plug on it, which were those big plugs. And you may have a console uh, terminal connected to it as well through the console port. And when you boot it up, all of a sudden you start seeing stuff come out of the console before the frame buffer is initialized. And that's normally because of where you've put the frame buffer within the PCI bus, right? So... If I was to put a frame buffer into the Sun server, into the E49, it would not initialize off the SSC. It would only initialize once the operating system boots. Now, if I just bring up the Sun V245 specs, so I know what I've got um, to look at, I can then help this viewer regarding his... Um, 
sunflower. So you have two PCIe slots and two PCIx slots. Oh, PCI Extended and PCI Express. Now, the um, with, for anyone that's not familiar with a V245, and I've only had limited experience with them, but this much I do know is the fact that you have uh, two power supplies, you have a net management, you have a serial management, and then you have a serial TTYB, so you have a failover port as well. Couple of USBs, four NICs, four gigabit NICs, and then your two PCI buses. Now, Chase, that's his name. Um, with your V245, it's gonna depend on what you're gonna use it for as to why you want a graphic card in it, okay? If you are gonna use it for a Linux purpose of a, you know, fairly powerful workstation, I can understand it. But if you're going to, or, or you're going to use Solaris on it, that's fine. No problem. If you're going to use it as a server with, say, one of the BSD um, systems like OpenBSD, I can... Excuse me. Mm. I'm weary already. Um, you can... Uh, get away with not having a frame buffer. Now, it's taken me a bit of time to remember how to do everything through serial com or uh, serial management. But the V245, as I said in this morning's video, it's a pretty powerful little entry-level server. All right? It's the newest style of server, much like my Storage 5320. Story, storage Tech 5320, I'm sorry. But... Um, to give you an idea, Chase, the, the, the best thing I can suggest you do with your Sun server is work out what you're going to do with it first. Once you've worked that out, then work out whether you're going to... To get a PCIe frame buffer for it, I, I don't know anything about. I don't even know if they exist. But if you're going to use it, say, for CAD of some just some description, or you're going to use it for um, object-orientated programming or whatever like that, I'd be looking at something like an XVR series frame buffer, something with a bit of guts in it, maybe a 1200 or 4000 depending on how much money you want to spend. When you install your frame buffer, and let's say you were going to go a PCIX frame buffer, so we'll go with a XVR 100. Now, if you're going to use Solaris initially, right, what will happen is, is that you will turn your computer on to your server. If you're not going to have a console out of it, you'll obviously have to wait till open boot prom loads through the frame buffer, and then you can just boot your CD. From there, if you are installing Solaris, obviously all the graphics drivers and memory drives will be installed for your specific card. If you're going to use it as a server, say as NFS or Samba or whatever, I don't think you'll need a frame buffer. Unless you're like me, in which case you somewhat struggle without a frame buffer. Now in the case of me, I'm not going to bother putting the frame buffer into the E49. I don't need to. I'm reasonably comfortable now that I know what I'm doing with OpenBSD through SerialCon or SSH, whatever you want to call it. The V490, now that's a different story. I may, I'm not saying I will, I may put a frame buffer into that down the track later on. I haven't decided yet. I don't know how what I'm going to do with the V490 yet. Um, but Chase, look, don't go and get yourself a standard PCI graphics card. Because it's not going to work. You, you're going to have to get a frame buffer. Um, because of the way Open Boot Prom works, it needs to initialize the onboard video memory. And if the memory's not mapped to what Open Boot Prom wants or needs or expects to see, then going out and getting a standard graphics card like this, you're going to waste your money. 
That's probably the best way of explaining it. Um, I'm not, because I can't remember if I've come across or interacted with the V245, I've seen them, I know what they are, I just don't remember using them, which is, I guess, problematic. Um, but, ugh, good server, there's nothing wrong with them. One and a half gig Ultraspark 3, 3i CPUs are actually really good CPUs, very good CPUs. They were, um, the upgrade of them was my big Ultraspark 4 Jaguar and my big 4 Plus Panther. So they're very good CPUs. You've got an excellent server there. To actually install the graphics card into a 245, um, I would assume, I'll say I would assume, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, if I've used a V245, it was a long time ago and I can't remember, but it's very simple to install. And then as I said, make sure when you actually put your graphics card on that you've still got a serial terminal or some sort of serial emulator connected to the either the net management or the serial management of the server so that if, and I, I've had this happen on a 13W3 frame buffer, that I've put the card into a, um, Sun server, and it didn't initialize. I know why it didn't initialize because I didn't have the card in properly. But if I put if I didn't have a, a serial terminal connected to the Sun server when I put the graphics card or the front, front sorry frame buffer in, uh, I would never have known, and I would have been cracking it. So also make sure if you are going to use one of the other Unix Spark compatible derivatives such as OpenBSD, make sure that the frame buffer is compatible. Okay, now I know, I think it's XVR 100s are supported by OpenBSD. But your standard x86-64 graphics card, not supported. So, if you want more help on installing graphics cards into a V245 chase, I can't help you because I don't have one. And I, um, my storage 5320 is not the same setup for installing graphics cards as a V245 because um, 245 looks like it's a 3U high unit and my V240s are actually only 2 high. They use, um, they use the cards about this high. So there we go. Anyway, I hope that's helped you out, Chase. I hope you've managed to work out that's giving you an idea what to do. But, yeah, an ordinary x86-64 graphics card will not work on a Spark-powered Sun machine. You're going to need to get a frame buffer. And like I said, PGX-824, there's plenty of them out there. XVR-100, 400, 1200, and 4000. But a 4000, look, I, I looked at the price of an XVR-4000 and I nearly fell over backwards. They're not, they're, they're not cheap. They're brilliant graphics cards. They're fantastic. They're not cheap. Anyway, hopefully that's helped you out. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.